I'm good, man. I just wrapping up uh, coaches Zoom we had, and so UNC awesome. deal. So we, yeah, we just had to cut those dudes short. Yeah. It's all good though. It's all good. Yep. How you doing? How you doing? Good, good, good. All's well. All's good. well. So, what? Any? Are you able to give us any information of what you're talking about, or any any inf insight? Uh, we're gonna be better next year. That's, That's all I can it. say. That's it. We're gonna we're, be better. We were one. We were one match. We routed UNC. Which they ended up third in the country, and he, and our match came down to the heavyweight, which is one of the most exciting matches I've ever been a part of, or just being watching. And it came down to the heavyweight match, and the, the place was going crazy. Actually, they were they were pretty quiet, <laughs> you know. They were stunned. Yeah. NC, I mean, NC State brings a great crowd too, and uh, great matchups, man. Great matches all the way through. And it came down to the heavyweight, and they they won that match, close match, and they ended up winning. So that was, uh, awesome. was exciting. Oh yeah. All right, so we got. A, I guess we got a lot to talk about. There's, there's Kenny Monday, the athlete. There's Kenny Monday, the coach. Kenny Monday, the father. Yeah. <laughs> where do we start? Yeah, I guess. All that. So how, how is it? How, what's the difference between being an athlete versus coaching versus parenting? Well, you know, it's uh, it's intertwined. You know, it's it's still about um, being your best. You know, and that kind of thing, but. Uh, the, the the difference is I I can control when I'm when I'm wrestling I can control what's going on out there right and so I don't ever remember approaching any match from the time I started not believing I could win the match and so confidence was always huge for me and I think my mom and my dad kind of instilled that in me early and uh, so I was always a very confident kid you know and I didn't win all those matches but you couldn't convince me that I I I wasn't going to win before it started right and so. I think that's a big part of it. You know, I can, you know, me, I can control them. when they're wrestling. I can't control it, man. I can't, I can't control what, what happens out there. And uh, I can't control their work that they put in. I can, I can give them all my advice and, you know, all the, uh, the, the tech, technical things and, and, uh, and motivate them that way. But, but they, they've got to do the work. And that's the one thing that, that I've always expressed to them and always try to get over to them that, you know, I can show you all the technique and I can give you all my experience, but you've got to do the work and that's up to you, you know, and uh, whatever you want out of this sport, you can get. Absolutely. And now you said your parents set you up to be a very confident person, very confident athlete. How did they do that? What, what was, what, what was it like? You know, I started wrestling when I was five years old, four or five years old. I have two older brothers, Mike and Jim, and they started before I did at the YMCA. And um, when I first started, I was the smallest kid in the room. So I couldn't beat anybody. And so the kid, the next kid, my workout partner, the next kid to me, the bigger kid, he was, had been wrestling for two years. So he had experience and he had size. And so every, every day I'd go into the room, I'd get my butt kicked every single day, every single day. But they just kept pouring, pouring belief into me, pouring belief in, you, you know, you can just, just stay after it. Don't give up. Keep trying. You're going to get better. And I did. Yeah, I got every day. I got better. Every day I go back in, and it was never like a a personal thing for me. It was a sport, right? And they always kind of made sure that that we distinguished it was a sport from from real life, so we wouldn't take it really personal. So, right. And so I go in, man. I'm like, I'm gonna get you today. His name was Winky Cole, and I went, Winky. I'm, I'm gonna get you today, Winky. I'm gonna get you today. He get me again. Next day, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm today is my day. The day is, you know. So every day was like that until I started chipping away at him, and I finally kind of past him but I think just you know just instilling confidence and belief in yourself and my mom always said that uh, and my dad always said that um, no one no one can believe in you more than you I can believe in you and your mom can believe in you we can all believe in you but no one should ever believe in you more than you and so that always stuck with me and so I'm like man I just I just got to believe it's like you can do whatever you want you can be whoever you want they instill that in me early you got to work, you got to plan, and you got to focus, and you got to go after it. So that's kind of what I did, man. And I just, I never looked back from the time I started. Never looked back. Awesome, and that's yeah. that's a good that's a good point right there too. How you said that they they said distinct making a distinction between sports versus life, like that's that's key because a lot of us make identity meanings about ourselves if we fail, if we succeed. It makes me a better right. person or a worse person. Talk about that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I hear athletes say things like, 
you know, well, you know, winning and win and losing don't define who I am. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's true to a certain extent, but I think it's, you know, wrestling, it's just a sport. Now I grew up playing all sports, you know, basketball, football, you know, uh, did a little bit of karate, a little bit of boxing. And so mm-hmm. sports was huge in, in my life. And I grew up in a neighborhood that was just a, a fantastic neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, and we had so many great athletes, so many great families and everybody, you know, two parent homes. And, and we, we caught our, we were the hood before the hood was the hood. Right. You know? And so we, we, so we would go and we play other, other neighborhoods. We play other streets and, and I just grew up with a, just a fantastic neighborhood where it was just very competitive. And, um, and so that was just a big part of growing up. And it was always about <coughs> being a good person, having a good character, you know, living right. Um, but, you know, and then, then I learned early the value of, of being a teammate. You know, we had, a, a, I had a, just a fantastic football coach when I was playing uh, my first football coach. You know, first time I, I had pads on, and um, and he would just always stress the importance of, of being a team, a great teammate. And so, man, I learned that early, man, just the value of teammates and being a great teammate and being there for your for your team and not letting your team down. And that's one of the things that my my mom, my dad instilled in me too is that you know if I started something, then I was going to make that I was there for the team. And I wasn't going to quit on the team. I wasn't going to be selfish. I was going to do everything I can. To, to do my part, but then also help my teammate do, be better. So I grew up with that early on, man. And then just had, had a fantastic childhood as far as competition is concerned, you know. That's awesome. And then how do you yeah. take that and then into bringing that into parenting? You know, you have you've three children, right? I do. I do. I have and- Sydney. You know, Sydney's, uh, she's 25, and uh, she works for Penguin Random House, a uh, publishing company out in New York. And so she's doing well. She graduated from Howard University, finished high school in three years. And in the city? She's in the city? She's in the city, yeah. Well, she's oh, home she's, now. She's, she's, she's yeah. yeah, she's home. She's, so she's home normally for. right by me. I'm in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, her, her, her office is in Manhattan. Okay. And she lives in Jersey City. And then nice. so she, she, she goes to Manhattan every day. But, uh, yeah, she's, she's doing really well. And then, of course, Kennedy is uh, – a rising senior this year, and then Quincy's a rising junior at Princeton. So uh, they're all home. And um, I think just, just the lessons learned early on, just being, uh, being a great teammate, being a, being a, and that, that goes in your family as well. You know, we support one another in whatever we do. If something comes up where we're behind them, if, if there's an achievement or there's a, a something that they, they did well, we're backing them. We're cheering them up. If you know if they had a setback, we're backing them. We're cheering up. And so it's really just about lifting each other up and uh, good times and the bad times and knowing that whatever happens, that you can overcome it. And whatever happens, you can overcome it. You know, so you just can't take everything so personal. You know, and uh, but you know, just having two great parents. You know, unfortunately, my, my mom and dad are still alive. And one, my dad and my mom is 82. Just turned 82 last uh, a couple of weeks ago. My dad's uh, 81, and so. Just two great parents, man, that was always in my corner, you know, always uh, trying to get me to do the right thing other than the wrong thing. And then if I did the wrong thing, uh, it was it was uh, consequences behind that. And um, and so that's that's just kind of how I how, how I lived and, and how I teach my kids that, that you can be whatever you want to be in life uh, as long as you work hard, stay focused. Uh, keep doing the right things, right? And so, and then just be a great teammate. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds like you really had a, really a great perspective. Parents, yeah. yourself, and then yeah. being able to carry that with you, you know, in wrestling and life. So then how how about the, okay, so now the boys wrestling. You're Kenny yeah. Monday's son, or sons, two of them, right? Yeah. How, how do you get across to them, okay, yeah, my career is my career, great. You're doing your thing. Um, dealing with that, how do you? How, what do you tell them with that? You know, it's not easy. It, it's definitely not easy. You know, being being my son, but I think, you know, growing up, you know, I didn't do a whole lot of, a um, lot of, um, you know, I, they didn't really know a whole lot about my career. You know, they knew who I was, and they would sometimes they would get it from other people. Other people would come up and say, "Your dad was this, your dad was that," and they're like, "What? Really? You did that?" You know, and so. Uh, 
and and I and I just explained to him early, you know, that that you know the, a lot of the pressure that you're going to get from being um, my son, Olympic champion's uh, son, is just it's going to come from other people. You know, it's not going to come from me as 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 as, as such. You know, we're going to always work hard. Like I said before, we're going to do the work. Um, we're going to do the best you can. That's all I was really concerned with. Uh, is doing the best you can, giving your best effort, uh, preparing yourself. I mean, there's there's things that you've got to do, of course, in the sport, in any sport that's going to give you the best opportunity to win and be successful. So we try to nail those things down. But then after that, it's just about, you know, doing your best. And, uh, you know, and I think now that they're getting in, into college, it, they can kind of see it now, where they've got their own path, they're making their own way. I mean, elementary and, and, and junior high and high school, was a little different <clears throat> now that they they've been in the sport you know for 15 years now they kind of they can see their own path they can see the things that they um, are doing on a daily basis is going to help them be successful so it's kind of kind of out of my hands a little bit now so they're they're out they're doing their own thing and um, I'm excited to see it because now I mean I think they're both good enough to, to do whatever they want to do in the sport you know they've, they've, they've been around a lot of good people a lot of great coaches yeah, it's a great competition. Um, it's a good, good environments, and um, you know. So now it's just uh, it's up to them what they want to do as far as uh, in the sport. You know, they, they're they're doing well in school. Uh, education is is very important in our in our in our house, and um, and so they're doing really well in, in the classroom, and uh, they're good kids. And they're two years apart. They're two years. They're eighteen months apart uh, as far as age, but. You know, Quincy, you know, he's a Princeton. They don't redshirt. And so he, he, he drops it as a true freshman. Kennedy redshirted his freshman year. And so uh, they're one year apart as far as eligibility, as far as wrestling, uh, but 18 months apart in, in, in age group. And so were they always so very funny close? now. Yeah, 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 they're always, yeah, they've always been pretty close. You know, Kennedy's always been bigger, you know, and uh, he's still bigger. Kennedy, Quincy's catching him. But, you know, it wasn't really until – until college that they're really able to start to kind of work, be able to uh, train together, you know, because uh, Quincy was really small in, in high school. And then I think in high school, Quincy was 106, 113, and Kennedy was at 126 and 130, you know, so he was too, too big for him. Now they're, you know, they're at one point, they were in the same weight class. They were both at 157 and uh, Kennedy kind of outgrew the weight class. So he's at 165 now. So I think Kennedy, Quincy's almost, caught him. I think he's like wearing 170 and Kennedy, Kennedy's like 175. So they're close. And so now they can actually actually really train together now. And so it's, uh, it's kind of fun to watch. That's awesome. So they're, they're weighing about 170, 175. So that's, they, they're not cutting a lot of weight. Not like ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. No, they really don't, man. And, and that's something that we've always kind of, and they, there's been times where uh, I think one time, and I think when Quincy was a sophomore in high school, he had to he, he had to cut down to 13 and it had a growth spurt. And uh, so for the team, we were trying to win a national, I mean, a state title for the team. He cut to 13 and that's probably his biggest cut he's ever done. Kennedy's never really cut very much weight. I think, um, you know, he, you know, he weighs 172, he's around 65. He, you know, he doesn't, he didn't cut some cut, cut any weight. And then Quincy, he's wrestling 57. He only, you know, he's been weighing about 63, 64, 65. So he didn't really cut. And, he had an opportunity one time, I think, when, when Kalazic was at 49 the previous year. And then, then so he, he, he graduated last year. And Quincy, we thought about going down to 49, but then he's like, man, this, this class work is too, <laughs> this load is too heavy. I'm not cut anyway. And so I'm like, yeah, good, man. So that's, that's the one thing that I kind of, I, I told them that um, I really didn't want them cutting that, that kind of weight. And a couple of times in my career, I cut a little too much weight. That's the one thing that I thought that I would to do it again. I would I wouldn't cut as much weight as I as I cut, you know, in, in, in college. And so uh, that's something that uh, I'm glad that they they're not uh, they're not doing. Yeah, we've we've always said that cutting weight doesn't make you a better wrestler. Becoming a better wrestler makes you a better wrestler, right? Of course, it's part of the sport. That's Man, right. Everyone's got to pull a little weight here and there. But, yeah, speak yeah. to that maybe a little bit for the middle school and high school kids and even the parents who think, no, they have to get down to a certain weight all year round so they're competitive, so they're winning the tournament in May, June, July, those kind of things. Well, you know, growing up, it's always been a, a misconception of wrestling, and that's just a, it's been, it's been a bad, 
part of wrestling. Because I, you know, growing up, we I seen it a lot. You know, I've seen a lot of cut, a lot of weight cuts. And, you know, like I said, I cut weight. You know, I could have probably my my soft my junior year. I wrestled 142 myself my freshman year, 150 my my sophomore year. I could have went up that next year, you know, to 158. Then I probably should have. But I was after Nate Carr. Nate beat me in the in the NCAA finals that year, and I was after him. So I'm like going back down to 50 to get this dude. But um, no, I think it's a misconception, and, and and I think wrestling has has evolved a little bit, of course, uh, as far as uh, the rules. Uh, same day weigh ins, you know. They, you know, we when I was in college, we had five hours before the match, you know, before our matches started, and those guys got an hour. And so I think wrestling has definitely moved in that direction to try to to um, get away from that that stigma of cutting weight. A lot of we we lose a lot of athletes, yeah. you know, that um, they're can you know they see you know kids cutting weight and they're like, man, I don't, I don't want any part of that. There's been a lot of football players that that, that would have wrestled that didn't because of the weight cut issue. So, no, it's, 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 uh, it's definitely uh, something that I think kids and, and parents need to, and, and it's just about, and now the information is so ready, readily av- available for you to, to, to research um, nutrition and, and just doing it the right way. You know, instead of trying to eat whatever you can, eat McDonald's and fries and then just cut the weight off, you know, just eat right, just eat right. You know, do right, and uh, and, and uh, but there's a lot of information that that parents can get, even if they didn't never wrestle. There's a lot of information that they can they can get and uh, and apply to the kid's career. Sure, that makes makes a lot of sense. And the other thing I was thinking about with your sons now, what you said they were pretty close growing up in terms of always being together, hanging out together. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they've always been you know the best friends, you know. And of course, as Kennedy got older, you know he you know he kind of got. He went to high school. Of course, he kind of separated himself a little bit. He's a high school kid. He didn't, he didn't want to hang out with the little brother. You know, he wasn't in high school yet. So he's, he kind of separated from him a little bit, you know, doing his thing in high school. And they've all been, always been close and uh, have always supported one another and uh, had each other's back growing up. And uh, they've always squabbled. <laughs> they always squabble in the house at some point, you know. So, I was going to say, uh, how was it was, once, they, once they moved apart and they went, to, you know, one North Carolina, other Princeton? Yeah, it was uh, it was tough, man. It's been it's been tough. It was really tough. I think um, I think when 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 Kennedy went to school, the 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 great thing about that is that we were we we when I took the job at, at UNC as, as club coach, we came to, to to Carolina as well, and so they were still in the same city, and uh, so that helped, you know, because we'd have still been in another city, then they'd have been really separate, right? but but we were still in the same city with Kennedy. And uh, so they were still able to see each other a lot. And of course, he went to Princeton. Yeah, it's it, it was it was it was a it was a little little uh, it was an adjustment. It was an adjustment for him, I think. And uh, and they still support each other. They talk on the phone, that kind of thing. But uh, they they wasn't able to see each other on a on a daily basis. So that was definitely um, an adjustment. Yeah, but Quincy Quincy's done a great job, man. He's either he's done a great job of, of you know doing his own thing and his own path and. Um, you know, and he adjusted moving away from the house. And so he's, he's really doing a good job. That's great. That's great to hear. I know that was tough for me when uh, my brother and I were always real close, me and Jeff. And right. he went he went to an Ivy League school, University of Pennsylvania. I was at Rutgers. Right. For, I was at Rutgers for three years. And I mean, it's only an hour and a half apart, but we were pretty much right. inseparable. So it was a big adjustment before until I transferred right. over to be with him. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> Couldn't take it anymore, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so we got to we got to get back together. So that's good. I know. I'm, I'm, you know, of course I'm, you know, I'm, I ask Quincy all the time. Hey, you okay? You, we always got a spot for you and C. So he's like, right. I'm good, Dad. I'm good. <laughs> that's right. That's great yeah. stuff. So talk about some of your um, bigger influences as co- uh, coaches that were the biggest influence on you growing up through high school, college, anything like that. Yeah, man. That's that's. Um, that's a great question because I really, you know, I was in, I was exposed to greatness early. Yeah, like I said, I started wrestling at the YMCA. We had, you know, great role models, great coaches, great people. Um, other than my, my my family, my mom and dad and brothers, my two older brothers, had, you know, they wrestled and uh, kind of followed behind those guys. But um, I think the first, uh, you know, first coach was probably out of elementary school was my high school coach, Ernie Jones. And um, you know, we ended up winning 
Like four state titles at, at, uh, at Booger T. Washington High School in Tulsa. And uh, Ernie was a great coach, great coach, great guy. And he's still coaching. He's still coaching the Cassia Hall in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And his, nice. his sons are running the, the Broken Arrow program in uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And so his sons are running that program. And when I was in high school, they were like little bitty boys. They're like four or five years old. And so, it's, you know, it's really good to see those guys take over that program. But he was probably one of the best coaches I had. You know, high school coach. He really managed me well. You know, I was a, a kind of a, a prodigy in high school and, and um, undefeated going through high school. And he, he kind of managed me well. He never let me get too too big for my britches and, and kept me uh, kept me humble and and uh, knew how to kind of manage me and, and and keep me, you know, on the right track. How did he do that? Um, so he was, you know, I think he just he just uh, he's just a great coach. He just would always talk about life. He would talk about uh, things outside of wrestling. Um, and, and just, you know, let me know that, uh, and, and it, it got back to being a great, great teammate. We had great teams, uh, but it got back to being a great teammate and, and really doing all I could. It wasn't just about me, you know, because sometimes I'll get so wrapped up in my own matches and my own career and what I'm doing, what, I'm, what I needed. And uh, but it always bring me back down to, hey, look, you know, he would put me, he would assign me to different guys. Like, we would have guys that we had a couple of guys that started wrestling as sophomores and were state champions as seniors. Um, and so we've had four or five guys that we'd get out of the hallway and uh, we start them wrestling and then they would, they would, they would, you know, develop. And so he would always put me with those young kids. He'd always make me be one of his side coaches. Like uh, I was just kind of like assistant coach the whole time. And so he would always kind of make me see the importance of it. And then it'd, it'd, it'd pay off. Those guys would get better and, and we, you know, like I said, we won four state titles. And so that was one of the reasons that um, one of the ways that he, you know, kept me humble. He, he would make me work with the young kids, you know. And then how about them going through college and then inter the international scene? Well, yeah, then after that, you know, I mean, I, of course, like, as a kid, I would always, growing up in Oklahoma, you know, I would always go down to uh, Stillwater and watch Oklahoma State wrestle. I'd watch OU wrestle. Uh, and so I would watch those matches. And so, like I said, I – when I was 10 years old, I'd been, it was 1972 when I was 10. So that, that was one of the greatest teams ever, you know, and Gable and Wayne Wells. Wayne Wells is from Russell at OU. He's an Oklahoma guy. And so I'd watch him through, 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 uh, through college. Um, I got to watch Rick Sanders, uh, Jimmy Carr, um, Chris Taylor. Got all those guys autographed when I was a kid. And, and so watching those guys, and Myron Roderick was, was the head coach. Uh, before Chesbrough got the job in 1970, 71. And uh, so I, we'd go down there and we'd watch him and I got to meet him and, and uh, went to a couple camps from, from My, Myron Roderick. And so he was another one that, that, was, that influenced me and I got to watch his teams and watch the way he coached. And I was just a student, man. I, I was a sponge. I would, I, would, I would watch the great guys wrestle, but I would also watch the coaches and I would watch how he, inter how he interacted with the, with the wrestlers and you know, how he motivated them, how he talked to them, whether they won or lost. I held them coming off the mat. And so I just kind of, I just clued, I just kind of keyed in on that, right? And so I learned a lot from him, from Adrian Roderick. And then, of course, the time at Chesbro was my college coach, and he took over for uh, Myron Roderick and uh, won a national title in 1971 uh, as a team. And uh, so I got to watch that team. And so watching him, and then he, of course, ended up wrestling for him in, in college. And then him and then uh, Stan, Stan Abel was at OU and uh, – uh, Mickey Martin was there before him. And so just watching those teams um, compete. And, and so those guys are all influences of mine. And then, uh, of course, you know, watching Gable and, and as he came up through and won a gold medal and then went on into coaching. And so watching him grow. And I remember being uh, – when I was a senior, I was a senior in high school. And I went to the national tournament. And I ran, in, ran into Gable. And I was – they really wasn't recruiting me, right? And, uh, but I was, you know, recruited by just about everyone. So I saw Gable, and he, and he came up, and he, and he saw me. Hey, he said, you're, you're Kenny Monday, right? And I said, yeah, yeah. He said, um, I said, how, how you doing, coach? And he goes, uh, well, have, you ever, have you ever thought about wrestling for the University of Iowa? We'd love to have you. I said, coach, um, man, no disrespect. I love you, a big fan, but I want to wrestle against you guys. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I want to wrestle against Iowa, all right? Because you know, growing up in Oklahoma, we would go to Iowa, and we had dual meets as a kid, and I wrestled Barry Davis one time when I was in eighth grade. I wrestled Barry Davis, you know, dual meet. Oh, in a tournament, in a tournament. 
And um, I didn't even know who he was, but he was just a tough, tough, tough match, man. And, and uh, I didn't, I didn't find out who he was until, of course, I knew him later. We're teammates later, but I was going through my dad's closet one time, and I found an old bracket. And, and looking through the bracket, and it was Emmitsburg, Iowa, eighth grade, ninety-nine pounds, and I beat, I had Barry Davis in my bracket. I beat him nine zero, and I said, "I'm gonna say." Man, that was Barry Davis. I knew that kid, and he was a, he was tough. Maybe earn every point. I had pinned the kid in the finals, but he was a, he was the guy, right? Yeah. And so and that was after the Olympics, after the Olympics, and so uh, so next time I, I said I can't wait to see Barry. So next time I saw him, I go Barry. I was going through my dad's closet and I pulled out this bracket, and there you go. Yeah, Monday, you kicked my butt. You kicked my butt. He and probably remembered. Back. No, he remembered. <laughs> he did. He remembered. He because re he said, "Yeah, you you kicked my butt." And uh, he never forgot it. I didn't know who he was. And, uh, but yeah, I knew he was a tough kid. <laughs> that's, that's right. No, we, we tend to remember the ones we lost a little bit better. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. all those great influences. Now, how did, how did they get you ready? Because obviously we talk a lot about mindset. How did they get you ready mentally? And there's, of course, many different things. How to get you um, prepared right before the match, what you should be telling yourself managing your emotions throughout the course of the tournament, uh, believing in yourself and, and the adversity, dealing with adversity when it, when it comes your way. How did those right. coaches influence you mentally? Well, yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, I, I never really had a, I never had a problem with confidence, like I said earlier. Never, never, never had a problem believing in, in myself. Uh, of course, the times that I, I would lose matches, you know, they they pick me up and say, you know, and just technically, this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. Keep your head up, and um, and help me in that in that regard. I remember my freshman year in, in college, and um, I was seated fourth going to the. Had a pretty good. I never registered. Had a pretty good, pretty good year going to the national tournament. I think I only lost. I lost to Mesker was a champion that year. I lost to Mesker twice because he was at OU. I lost to. Um, Zaleski at Iowa and lost to uh, Brown from Iowa State. I think I had maybe four losses, four or five, four or five losses going to the national tournament. Seated fourth. And um, I made it, it was in the quarterfinals and I lost in the quarterfinals, a match crazy, match 12 11, and uh, came back and uh, lost, my, lost the next round and I'm out of the tournament. And so I had never. I couldn't remember the last time I'd been out of a tournament. Maybe my first year of wrestling had I been out, beat out of beat out of a tournament. And so I didn't know how it felt. It was it was like the weirdest feeling. I had never felt that. And I'm like, I was like, after after that match, I'm like, I went up to Chesbro and I'm like, man, so I'm so I'm I'm I couldn't even really say it. I'm like, I'm 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 out. He, he goes, got a chuckle, he goes, Yeah, yeah, you're out. You're you you're so you're you're out. And uh, that's it. So so just Go eat and relax, and but you, you'll 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 win it next year. You'll come back and win it next year. So keep your head up, you know. So he just kind of kept my head up, and he got after me that summer. Though we got we went to work that summer, and he really got after me and not let me have a, an off summer. So he really got after me, and, and he really wasn't a freestyle coach. His brother was a freestyle coach, but um, but he got after me that next summer, and he got me ready. And of course, I was in the finals the next three years. Nice, nice. Talk talk about rivalries. And of course, you think you and Nate Carr, you and Dave Schultz. How does that help you elevate to the next level? Um, what is that? What's what's it like dealing with a rival in front of you that you know you back and forth with and everything, and just the mental approach towards it, and also how it makes you better? Yeah, it, I think you know I've had rivals since the time I, I started wrestling, and you know, way back when when I was in, 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 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know my first rival rival was a kid by the name of Lou Gilpin. And Luke was just just a fantastic little wrestler. He's like a little child prodigy. He had won Tulsa, you know, a couple times, and and uh, so he was just mopping everyone up, you know, wiping everybody out. And of course, first time I wrestled him, he, you know, beat, first couple times I wrestled him, he beat me, beat me pretty good. And so he was a target. He was a target. And so he's the one that got me up in the morning, you know, when I went to I go run before school, you know, I do my push ups at night. And so rivals, you know, rivals make if you really want to get better they make you better right and so yeah even back that, I, that was my first rival and, and i finally got to the point where i could beat him and i was dominating him but it took a while and it took that extra work it took that extra, extra focus so right then 
that taught me that taught me about Riley. It taught me um, how to, how to prepare, how to believe, how to how to get the work done. And so I had that pretty much. That that was my first introduction to to rivals. But then I think Nate Carr was probably my next rival, and he and Nate took me to another level. Yeah, Nate he took me to another level, and because. He was such a tough competitor. He was when I first wrestled Nate. He was the defending champ. He won the the year before when I was a freshman at forty two. He won it at one fifty. So the next year I bumped up. To, I went up to fifty, and um, and so the first time I wrestled was a dual meet, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, and I beat him. And he uh, beat the defending champ, right? And then so, you know, of course Nate was you know walking around like, dude, you. You know, you can have that one. I'm gonna get you the next one, right? <laughs> so, and Nate was always a big talker, you know. And uh, then I beat him in the Big Eight. And then uh, so I had two wins, though. So going to the national tournament, I was seated first in the, in the national tournament going in. And then Nate beat me in double overtime in, in the finals. And uh, then we went again, kind of in the same scenario the, the following year. But you know, Nate was such a tough competitor, and, and again. I had to focus, man. I had to focus. I had, I couldn't make mistakes. And so it really took me to another level uh, as far as uh, living right. Uh, you know, of course, doing the work, getting the work done, um, studying, you know, being, 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 just being a, a better person as far as my lifestyle, you know, getting, getting, getting the rest. Making sure that that uh, I got my 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 business done before uh, before wrestling, you know, getting get, getting the work done. And so it was just about focusing and then just really believing in yourself. And um, and so that was that was, Nate took me to another. Nate made me better. We made each other better. And, and we we sit out. We talk about it all the time. But uh, yeah. So then the last time I wrestled Nate was in 1987 World Team Trial. And uh, he had beat me in the, in, the, in the U.S. Open in the last second shot, last second match, uh, last second move. But I beat him. That was the last time we wrestled. I beat him 5-0 and 8-1. And that was the last time I wrestled him. Yeah, so after that, we, we were talking. And, of course, Dave was the number one guy. And he, Dave beat me in the 87 World Team Trials. And then so after the tournament, I'm like, Nate, man, you should go down. Man. You should go down to 149. And then because I'm making this team. I'm making this Olympic. This is an 87, 88 next year, right? Said, Nate, you should go down, and we can both make the team, and we can train together. And they said, No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that, right? And then, so I said, All right, think about it. So a couple of weeks later, he called me and said, All right, buddy, I'm going down. And uh, so he went down to 149, and uh, so so then I was at 63 because Mesker was the number one guy at 149, and Dave was the number one guy at 63, and they were both fox catcher. Me and Dave, I mean, me and Nate were sun kids. So then Nate came to Stillwater. We trained together. And uh, and so, man, our matches were, were nothing compared to our workouts. <laughs> People really? thought, man, you, oh my god, oh my goodness. I mean, because then there's no pressure. You know, you just train. There's no pressure. You know, you're not living and dying on every every takedown. And so, oh my goodness. And so we we would go from one end of the room to the other room. And Nate was the fastest guy I've ever competed in. The fastest, fast switch, explosive. And, um, and he had so much, so much. And I, I could see Jimmy Carr, his brother. Jimmy would get under you and toss you in a minute. Man, this guy had some of the best hips ever. And, uh, and Nate was kind of, he was kind of the closest car to, to Jimmy and as far as that was concerned, right? And so, um, but man, we had some, some incredible workouts. It was just fantastic. He made me better. You know, he made me better. He made me, he prepared me for, for the Olympic Games. That's for sure. We, each other, for sure. You know, and then of course Dave was. Um, Dave and I wrestled fourteen times. Wow! And, um, yeah, he beat me the first three, and then I beat him in eighty-seven World Team Trials. It was two out of three. He beat me the first one. I beat him the second one. He beat me the third one to make the team in eighty-seven. And then after eighty-seven, I beat him. I beat him ten straight matches. And um, but Dave, I still have anxiety behind Dave. <laughs> I still, I still. I mean, Dave was the kind of guy I had to get, I had I had I had to focus so hard to 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 overcome uh, just you know everything that he had. And he had so many weapons, and uh, so just to focus and watch him wrestle and watch him compete, and then get inside his mind was just. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't 
I didn't know I was capable of getting there until I got there. You know, I mean, this guy was, uh, you could, he, you could say Dave's name in like in 87 for the Olympic trials in 87, you could say his name and I'd break out in a sweat, <laughs> you know? So he, uh, he, he really, he made me great, man. He really made me dig deep and go to places I never thought that I could as far as just my training, my mindset, um, my focus, um, just, I mean, I can't even explain the nights that I had preparing for Dave Schultz. So he, he took me to another level. Awesome. Now, Coach, how do you balance focusing on what you're going to do versus not getting too cons- – being aware of their tools mm-hmm. but not getting overly preoccupied with that? We see a lot of athletes struggle with that when they have a rival. It becomes maybe a little thinking – a little too much about them and less about us. Right. How do you balance that? Yeah, and that's just the thing. I knew I knew that – because I, I would try to emulate Dave in, in certain positions, of course. You know, when I'm training, I'm, like, trying to do some of the things he, that he did kind of emulate. And so, but I understood, I understood that if, if I could, if I could master myself, if I could, if I could do the things that I do well for the whole match and not get tired, then, then I could, then I'd have a chance to beat him. I think I could beat him, you know, cause I had some good tools and I just, I believed in myself again, but, but if I could, if I could, do what I did well, better than what he does, then I'd come out on top. And so that was my focus. Just I just focused on the things I do well. I just mastered them. You know, my shots, you know, my my position, uh, my underhooks, uh, not getting turned. You know, you know, Dave was just a master on top, man. He he had a lace that was just, you know, phenomenal. And so just getting better in those positions, spending the time uh, in those positions. Um, you know, made me better, but I knew that I had to I had to get great at what I did, so I couldn't focus so much on what he did. I, only, only, and I did just to be able to stop it, because I had to stop what he his technique. Uh, but man, I hit Dave with singles, doubles, firemans, I threw him. I mean, so all of those things I had to I had to master in it in order to uh, to execute on it. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably see with your athletes, also your sons, or maybe at different points in their career where, you know, dealing with what they're focusing on before the match and during right. the match, making sure it's the right things as opposed to the wrong things. Can you talk about that a little bit where maybe some athletes get hung up on the wrong things? Right, and, yeah. right, right. Yeah, that's, that's individual. You know, I think it, everybody's different. Everybody handles pressure a little different, you know. Um, my 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 message is is to is to do the work, prepare yourself. You know, because if you're not prepared, you're not going to give yourself the best opportunity. If you if you're not prepared, then doubt is going to going to set in. You're going to start doubting yourself. And if you're not if you can't, uh, if you, if you're if you get tired, then you're not going to be an execute. You know, if you get tired, I can't. I technique doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you, what you you know, single double. That that doesn't matter if you're getting tired, right? So first and foremost, you got to be in shape enough to execute your technique, you know, throughout the match. Uh, but then after that, it's just about doing your best. It's about preparing yourself, going out there, believing in your abilities, you know, believing in, in, in who you are and, and just doing your best, man. Do, you know, don't beat yourself. Don't get caught up in the pressure of it. Don't get caught up in what people think. You know, you go out there and be yourself and, and do your best. I'm going to be proud. You're going to be proud of yourself. And you won't have any have any regrets, you know. So it's just about it's just, it's really what I focus on with them is just is just belief, believing in yourself, and that confidence that 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 you can beat anybody that you step on the mat with. Anybody you step on the mat with, you can beat, you can win, you know. But you got to prepare yourself mentally and physically. And mentally is just about um, knowing who you are, knowing knowing your you know the things that you do well. And it goes back to doing what you do well better than your opponent, right? So focus on what you do well. Don't try to be someone else. Focus on what you do well and uh, and get after it, man. Just give it, you know, give give it your all, give it your best. Don't leave anything on the mat. Yeah, 
I guess what, what, what gets a lot of athletes to the, to the next level is they're focusing on their improvement areas, their weaknesses, right. if you want to call it that. So they have to be very honest with themselves. I right. got to get better in these areas. But at the right. same time, they, they tend to then focus too much on that right. as opposed to what you're saying, what do you do well? Right. That's right. That's right. You're right. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's tough, man. It's a tough sport. You know, <laughs> it really is a tough sport. <laughs> you know, and I've played all the sports and it's just, it's, it's really a tough grind. But, um, you know, of course, injuries come into play and all those things come into play. And sometimes you, 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 can, you can't control those things. And so it's really about controlling what you can control and, um, and, and, and not beating yourself, you know, not, not thinking somebody, you know, I mean, I mean, Kennedy, for a prime example, you know, he's going to the tournament this year and he's got uh, Chinzo's second match uh, at NCAA and the bracket come out. And so he was ready, man. He was prepared. He was, he was really mentally prepared uh, for that match, you know. And so, you know, it kind of breaks my heart not to, to see it come to fruition because he was, he was prepared for it, man. He was really ready to, to knock him off, you know. And everybody thought that, you know, of course, you're waiting to see him, you know, him and uh, – the Iowa kid Russell, but 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 Kennedy was ready mentally for that for that match, you know. So um, it's just about believing in yourself. It goes back to from the first again from the time I started wrestling, and 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 I, that I never changed. I never changed in my approach as far as my belief system. And if you got a system of, of belief, right? If something goes wrong, it's, it's layers of your belief system, right? And so it comes back to you know, what you did, you know the week before, what you did a month before, you know, how did you set yourself up, you know, to, 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 for that success? And, um, and so a belief system is something that, that, that you kind of ingrain in them. And then when something goes wrong, you don't panic, you know, you know that you can, you can overcome, <coughs> you can overcome obstacles. You can overcome getting taken down in the second, in the first period, you can overcome, you know, getting off your back and come back and win the match. Right. But that's your belief system. It's not giving up. You know, still believing that you can uh, you can come out on top. You know, so that rock solid foundation. That's that's, that's right. what you're saying there, which is which is big, and that also stems with having that perspective. That yes, I love wrestling. Of course, I want to succeed, but it's not right. everything. It doesn't complete. It doesn't completely define me. There's there's life out there. There's other things that are going on too. That's big. What um? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you, you mentioned that you played multiple sports. What would your opinion be about that for athletes now? Should they be playing multiple sports and up until, up until what age should they start really specializing? What are your thoughts with that? You know, I played, I played through high school. I didn't play my senior year, you know, and I was a free safety and it had a, had a great, fantastic seat. I played football, man, since, you know, since I was in the, I think the second, third grade, right? So all my, every year I played. And I uh, love the sport, love the game. Probably my second greatest love uh, other than wrestling. And I think the only reason I love wrestling more is because it's an individual sport. And I can control my wins and losses. You know, I can, I can control my, 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 my tears and my, and my smiles, so yeah. to speak. And so, uh, but, you know, I, I played. And the only reason I didn't play, my, my dad taught me how to play my senior year. And I kind of, I still want that year back. <laughs> but you know, I think once you once you get out of high school, then it's it's kind of hard to 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 be in college and do multiple sports. Of course, yeah. it's very difficult, you know, especially academics and, that, and those things. But I don't think it's um, I don't think it's 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 you know imperative that guys specialize in one sport. I mean, wrestling has changed now than it, it was when I was growing up. Now you've got guys that you know club club programs or or i think in my opinion and i i think it's revolutionized the sport of wrestling because yeah. you know because guys now you guys can run a, a business uh, have a club and run a business and and, and 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 succeed and do well you know i ran a club for 10 years in texas uh in monaco and i kind of got some cues from him and then but that was kind of before it took off you know the guys were doing it for uh a, a, you know a, a livelihood and because uh, wrestling has always been different. I, and I always wondered as a kid, and I would see a karate school on every, only, every corner, man. It was always a karate school. Of course, I grew up in the Bruce Lee era and everybody was doing karate. <laughs> and, uh, but I never understood why wrestling couldn't follow that model. 
And it, I remember talking to Chesler, my college coach, and they said, Money, what do you want what do you want to do after college? And I said, Man, I, I think I'm gonna run a, a, a wrestling school, kinda like the karate school. And he's like, Ah, you know, that's a good idea, but I just don't think it works. You know, people aren't paying for wrestling. People aren't paying to send their kid, you know, to, to get wrestling lessons. And it just wasn't. It just wasn't the norm. You know, people it was just like a taboo almost. And um but I always thought that that was a, a, a possibility. And I thought it would be a viable a business that people can do. And, and now you're seeing it. You're seeing it today. Um, you know, but I, I think playing all other sports, I think, you know, wrestling is such a demanding sport. I think, you know, you got to have great agility, great strength. And so all those sports just kind of gives you uh, the ability to, to build your body. Uh, and, and build and build that competition. You know, competition is great, man. And, and you know, I've always been competitive. I'll, I'll, I'll compete in anything from ping pong to the pool to basketball. And I never played basketball because it was always in a season of wrestling. But I always played sandlot basketball. I was on a I was always on a playground playing again because we had a lot of great athletes, man. And from I had Tisdale, Wayman Tisdale grew up in my and you know, I went to high school with Wayman Tisdale. We played basketball. John Starks. Grew up with him, you know. So a lot of great athletes come out of Tulsa. Oh wow! So, but I was legit. Yeah, great, I was out, great athletes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm always playing basketball on the, on the playground, right? And so, love the love the sport, love the sport. But um, you no, know, I think guys can spread themselves around, and I think wrestling, you can still be successful um, uh, doing other sports. Because yeah, I just think a lot of parents and kids have the misconception, like in even like sixth, seventh grade, they say, uh, hey, if they don't start specializing now, forget it. They're not going to come into college, com high school competitive. High school. Right, right, right. Yeah, and but you see it, though. You see the, yep. develop the development of these kids now, man, growing up. You know, when I was running a club, of course, that was back when, you know, of course, David Taylor was, I remember he was, you know, little bitty kid, and I was talking to his dad, and, and uh, we talk about, I was running a club, and I'd see him at Tulsa Nationals, and, and, um, we talk about you know, managing his his kid. And I, I'd had a couple of meetings with him, and as far as you know, how how to manage a superstar and that kind of thing. And uh, so we'd had those discussions, uh, but he was specializing. He was he was doing straight wrestling. He was going here, there, workout parties here, workouts here, and training camps here. And so, you know, I, I grew up with, with watching all those guys do that, and, and it had some training camps for him. And I was in camps with with Lance Palmer and and those guys, and so. Um, and so you, you see that today. You see guys specializing and you see a better kid coming up. But I still, you know, I think it's kind of hard to play basketball and wrestle, but football is always a great sport. You can always kind of do both sports. I think wrestling, I love the, I love the idea of wrestling can get away from basketball a little bit. And you know, maybe like in, if we can start wrestling season in January, uh, I think it would be great kind of get out and get away from basketball a little bit so you can, Maybe be able to do both sports, but no, I uh, I love all sports, man. I really do, and I think it's um, I think it helps those kids learn the value back to being a great teammate. That's because sometimes in, in the sport of wrestling, especially growing up, because you don't you're, you're on teams, but it's more individual now than it was when I was growing up. When I grew up, I had a full on elementary team, and we did dual meets twice a week before the weekend tournament. And so it was more of a team atmosphere. Now you get a kid and you can just go to tournaments. You can just you can train with your team, but you're still going to tournaments as individuals, you know? So you don't have, you really don't have that team concept. And, um, and so it's really, it's really different for, for the other young, young kids growing up now. But I think uh, the value of being a great teammate, man, is, is those guys miss that if they're just doing wrestling, man. That's that's a very important point because life is about being a great teammate, right? If oh, absolutely. Business, absolutely. family. If you're not a great absolutely. teammate, forget it. Absolutely. I think you can go back and, and talk to anybody that's been on my team. And I'm not you know, patting myself on the back, but if you go back and talk to anybody that's ever wrestled with me from the time I started, they would tell you that I put a lot of value in being te a great teammate. A lot of value. I learned it early. And it just it was it was always a big part of it, you know. Like I said, we my high school we won four state titles. Uh, and in college we we, were, we lost to Iowa. We were second behind Iowa twice. And uh, you know we had an opportunity when my senior year really we really had a best opportunity to, to win my senior year. John Smith he he kind of had the same story I did. John was seated fourth my senior year as if he was a true freshman 
seated fourth in the national tournament, got beat first round. That kid lost the next round. He's out. He didn't score a point, point for us my senior year in, 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 uh, in, in college. So he kind of cost us the national title. But uh, he made up for it later. But, but no, <laughs> just um, – no, I just, just always had a lot of value in being great teammates and, and being there. I mean, I would get up early in the morning. I would stay late at night. Um, and anything I would do to, to, to help my teammate be successful, because I didn't want to just win. I wanted everybody around me to win. I wanted, I wanted my circle to win. And, I, and I, I, I'm like that today. Yeah, I'm like that today. You know, you hear, hear the guys that's in UNC's room and, and we're training Jordan Oliver and everybody's in our circle. I want those guys to win. I want those guys to be successful because it just makes the make the sport funner, you know, makes what we do much more fun. And um, but it goes a long way. I mean, guys never forget it. That, that's such an important point, Coach. And I, I, I think in wrestling we don't hit on that enough. I don't hit on that enough. I guess maybe a lot of wrestlers think if we're if we're thinking about the team, we're not thinking about ourselves. And and I can't control them. And you know, I just got to do my thing. Right. So, and, uh, yeah. And a lot of times, man, that, that takes really it takes the pressure off of you. You know, it really does. I mean, I try to get that across to my my kids, you know, I'm like, look, if you're if you're spending time helping your teammate, you know, and you're trying to get in ready, you know, you're you're taking you're taking kind of the pressure off of yourself. Right. And then so it's it's really not more. It's just, it's about your team. And it, it kind of takes a little bit of that pressure off, you know, so because you're really you're really into what he's doing. You're really into what he's doing, and you, you, you're watching him too, right? So if he's wrestling, you're, you're, and I would always watch my teammates. And so when they came out, if, if there was something that, that they wasn't doing, then I'm like, man, this is what I see. I mean, I remember training with John, getting ready for make the, make, the, make the 88 team. When I went back to Oklahoma State in 87, you know, if there was something that he was doing that I saw that he could do better. I saw that it was an area he was getting stuck. And I'm like, man, this is what I see. I remember him training for Randy Lewis. You know, I'm like, man, this is something what I see. When I watched him develop that low single, I'm like, man, you got to stay below these guys' knees, you know. And so we, I watched him develop, and if it was something I saw, then I'm like, I'm pouring into him. And if it was something he saw, he was pouring into me, right? And so that's that's something that that you got to, you know, really focus on trying to be a better teammate. And yeah. like you said, it goes, it stays with you for the rest of your life. You know, whatever you're doing, it stays with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like you said, it's, it's, it's being a good person. It's developing that virtue for, for later in life. And just in the, you know, just as you're a student, a teammate, all of that, it's more fun. Yeah. And also, and also, as you said, instead of our vision being so tunneled right here, I got to do this. I got to do right. that. It's me, right. me, me. The pressure right. really mounts. If you're thinking about everyone, Okay, right. I'm one link in the chain. You're able to be a little bit more free. That's right. That's right. And you, that. and you, if you watch, if you study the great teams, and you see that, you see that, that, um, that inside that 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 locker room. You see that. You look at the. And that's what Penn State. You know, that's why those guys are so good. You look at you know the Iowa's. That's what Oklahoma State. You know, you study the great teams, and you see the characteristics of that team. They're great teammates because you see you see those guys pulling for each other. You see them like when those guys are wrestling, they're not in the back, you know, doing their own thing, or they're not over here on their phone. I and mean, they're into that match and they're pulling for their guy. And the guy wins. They're like, yeah, they're, they're, they're giving it, they're giving it to him, right? And so that that is a sign of the great team. And you and you can see it. You know, it's not it's not a secret. You see it, man. And the great coaches, great coaches, make sure that that guys understand that. That's great. That's great. La last question. Then Instagram's going to wind up cutting us off because it's an hour, but it feels like it just flew by. <laughs> the, the, right. the approach mentally from one Olympics to the next, was there a difference or basically the same thing? Oh, I, I, would, I would say the approach is probably a little different. You know, I think, um, you know, once you go through the Olympic Games and you get that experience, you kind of know what to expect, right? And then once, you, once you're on the circuit, you kind of know who's out there, you know, you, no one's really creeping up on you. You kind of know who's out there. Um, and so really nothing, nothing really changed. You know, I think the era that I grew up, I came in was, was, you know, Schultz and Baumgartner and uh, Kevin Jackson and, and uh, Chris Campbell, um, the guys that, that wanted to be legends, guys that wanted to, they didn't want to just win, you know, one title. 
those guys wanted to win multiple titles. You know, John wanted to win multiple titles. And so being, being in that era around some of the greatest wrestlers ever, um, you know, it kind of it it made you better, but it made you approach the, the, the competition with, uh, with a bigger vision. My, my vision was, was, you know, at the end of the day, I think the question that I wanted to ask myself was, was and I, that was the question that I wanted answered, was how good could I be? And once I knew that I was getting, getting good and getting to a level, I, want, I wanted to know how good I could be. I wanted that, answer, that, that question answered, right? And so I wasn't going to stop until I got my, got, got my answer to that, right? But I wanted to be a legend. At the end of the day, I wanted to be in the conversation of one of the best ever, right? And the guys that I were around, you know, that's, that, that, that was their, their focus. That was their vision. You know, they, they wanted to win for a long time, you know, and, and uh, set themselves apart. And so um, I was blessed to be around some of the best, some of the best coaches in the world, some of the best wrestlers in the world, and blessed to, to, com- to have competed against some of the best wrestlers ever, you know, from, from v- Varayev, Fedzayev, um, Tateyev, um, Schultz, Carr, uh, Kim Jackson, Melvin Douglas, Chris. I mean, I've been around and wrestled with some of the best people ever. Been around Gable. Gable was in the room. He never really coached me. He was on a – I think he was head coach in, in one, um, one team, I think our, our, our World Cup team one year. And uh, so being around him, being around Bobby Douglas, uh, one of the greatest coaches ever, uh, Chris Ch- Chesbro, Joe Say, um, so I've, I've been around some of the best ever and got to wrestle some of the best ever. And, uh, and so it's really been a you know, fulfilling career. That's awesome. Coach, thank you so much for all the great insights. I'm going to have to go through it. I want to take notes in my notebook. I hope yep. our listeners do. Thank you yep. again for everything. Send me any links where you want me to send yep. people for your team, for anything social media website will kick people your way. Thank you. Coach Buxton, how you doing, man? He's Coach, Coach <laughs> Buxton is saying hi and uh, – He's a great coach. He loves competing against him, and now we're coaching together. And uh, he's a great coach, man. He's always been awesome. A guy that uh, it's kicking us off.